Okay, we'll get started. We're joined on the dais by head co UCF head coach Katie Abrahamson Hen Henderson and student athlete Niala Schuler. Coach, if you want to come up with make an opening statement, please, and then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, um, you know, I think this game was just really uh, an exciting, fun, um, you know, great situation for us. I mean, this team, these seniors. Uh, have never been into the championship game of the American Conference, and it's a great accomplishment. And we wanted to just come in here and, you know, just play UCF basketball, have fun, you know, just um, enjoy this moment. I mean, because we have never been here before. And what we've accomplished this year, UCF has accomplished this year, and our, and our players and our seniors, three years ago, our seniors had only won seven games. And now they're in the championship. Uh, of the America Conference. So how could I not be so proud of them? I wanted them to enjoy every moment, enjoy last night, and then enjoy, enjoy today, enjoy the environment, enjoy you know, being in the American Conference Championship. And, I, and it, it, was, it was great to see our players had a great time. Please raise your hands as we have microphone holders, and we'll bring the microphone to you. Nayala, can you discuss what you guys talked about at halftime, only five baskets in the first half, and then a totally different second half for you guys? Um, in the first half, I think we're just a little uncomfortable. We weren't really playing our style of basketball. So we went into the locker room, regrouped, and then I think we came out with a lot more energy. We got more comfortable, and then I think we just started having a lot of fun. Please <laughs> raise your hand if you have a question. Um, well, we're really, really excited to know that this isn't the end for us. So we're just going to have to get back to work and hope to play a lot more games. Katie, just uh, what makes it so difficult to, you know, obviously you want to slow UConn down and play your pace. Just what makes it so difficult to try to do that? Uh, I mean, they're, I don't know what they are, number four in the country, number five in the country. So, I mean, this, this game was never about them. It was just about us and enjoying the moment and enjoying the situation and, enjoying the fact that in three years we got to the championship. I mean, obviously they're one of the best teams in the country and it's going to be, you know, impossible to come in and, and, and in this environment and win. So um, that's kind of what I said to piggyback off you about the halftime thing. I told my team, I'm like, you guys, you need to have fun. I mean, don't feel so stressed out here. Just have some fun. And they finally loosened up and, you know, they started playing, you know, better UCF basketball. Coach, you won the second half. What does that tell you about your, poss your chances in the, in the NCAAs yeah. where you're probably going to be a 9 or a 10? I know. When you're saying this to me, I'm just, like, elated. Like, you're saying that it's not over, right? And, and I don't know if they've been in a situation their first year where it wasn't over. In our second year, we're in the WNIT, the third year at WNIT, and now we're going to the NCAA tournament, which is amazing. And I'm so excited for these uh, young women because I've experienced it but none of the players on my team have experienced it. All my coaches have experienced, but none of my players. I'm just so excited that they get to enjoy this whole moment, you know, and be a part of that. But um, we've been really good. We've played a lot of great teams. Um, we've really relied on our defense. Our defense did a great job in the third quarter uh, against a, just a poor, poor, I can't say the word, pro prolific, prolific <laughs> scoring team. I mean, we held them to nine points in the third quarter, and that's, that's our defense. And we've been... You know, doing that pretty much, you know, for the last maybe four or five games, our fourth quarters and our third quarters, we've really done a great job defensively. And when we get good stops defensively, it tends to help our offense a little bit. So, Coach, yeah. uh, obviously, as it was just mentioned, you were close with them in the second half. How soon do you think it could be until another school in this conference can maybe compete with them and take UConn down to the wire in a game like this? Uh, I, I have no idea. I mean, I don't... <laughs> If anybody knew that, it would have been done by now, right? You know, so obviously they, they, they've built a dynasty here. And I'm, I'm, I'm for women's basketball and somebody like me that played a lot of years and played for some really, really Hall of Fame coaches, I did too, in the environment and what they built here. 
is really special. I mean, I think it's great, you know, and that's been a long time. They, you know, this has been built on uh, Rebecca Lobo and, you know, everybody else and Keish and keep going and keep going. And this is just year three for me, right? And I know Jose's done a fantastic job at USF. I mean, Michelle's going to do a great job at Cincinnati. Um, I think our conference ADs are really uh, hiring some great coaches out there that are we're all building and, you know, trying to get better. And um, so... Uh, I don't know that answer, you know, because they're still number, I don't know what they are. What are they ranked right now in the country? Second, second in the country. So to get from <laughs> last place to just second in our conference, you know, that's, and they're number two in the conference, that's, that's a long journey. But obviously it starts with recruiting and, you know, um, so it's going to be a while, I think. Not too long, but a while. Coach, this is the third time you've seen UConn now this year. What do you see in Nafisa Collier and the player that she is, and what does she make difficult for opposing teams on the court? Uh, I think she's the best player in the country. I mean, she is good. She's really good. She's really strong. She's really tough. She's hard to guard because she can play multiple positions. I mean, she's a perfect four, I think. Um, but she can handle the ball, and she can stretch you out, and she can just do you know, a lot of things. I mean, she's, she's, she's a special player. Coach, what were they doing to take KK out of the game? I think she had one basket in each half. Yeah, they face Gardner. I mean, I would too. I mean, she, she is. We were trying to, it's hard to face guard Nafisa, but we were trying to double Nafisa and do different kind of things like that. But they were just face guarding her. So we were, we just had to figure that out a little bit. And then the second half, they were doing it. And we ran a couple sets where we got some easy points um, and was having KK be the screener. Um, and it was opening up a lot of different people. You know, um, and, they, and they've shown that they that they've done a box of one and triangle two on people before, so that's what they were doing. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Nah, this team has defied a lot of expectations this season. But how are you able to make, and this team, how are you able to make your team expectations into a reality this season? Um, well, Coach Abe always talks about the hard work that we put in in preseason workouts in the summer. We ran the mile. That was really tough for a lot of us. And so I think all that hard work that we put in, it really made us mentally tough, and we were able to push through. And a lot of the hard practices that we had, it really prepared us, and we were able to see that the results really worked. The year you came... Uh to UCF, I'm yeah. sure a lot of other people were chasing you that particular year for the Albany success. What all made you uh, decide UCF is the next stop? Uh, his name is Danny White, our AD. He's, he's phenomenal. Um, his vision is phenomenal. What he wants to do with UCF and what he has done with UCF already is phenomenal. Um, and uh, I, I just believed in his vision and believed in what he wanted to do. And he talked about family a lot and had building a UCF family brand, and that's really what I'm about. I'm always about that family, academics, basketball. I mean, that, that's who I am. That's what I've always built my programs on. So just meeting him and listening to him, and obviously I had other people calling me about him. Um, and also to be able to work besides Johnny Dawkins is really special. I mean, men's and women's basketball coaches, um, they, we need to be able to work together, and he's, he's awesome. Um, Scott Frost was awesome. And then just the, the, the coaches and the administration that Danny's hired are around us, and um, he's done a lot of great things for women's basketball. I know he believes in women's basketball, and obviously you could see he does. Um, so I think that was big. And then the sunshine really helps. I love the sunshine. I love waking up every morning to the beautiful. The campus is gorgeous. The palm trees are gorgeous. The academic programs for the student athletes, like Nyla's in biomedical science, she's going to go to med school, you know. And so for me, that was really big for young women because they have so many majors at UCF, so many majors. And so when you recruit a kid and they say, I want you got to say academically um, too for young women to be able to come to UCF, have a great academic experience, have a great, you know, live in the beautiful dorms and walk every day in shorts. And I mean, it's it's a fabulous place. We have time for two more questions. 
Coach, for, uh, for whatever reason, Gino seemed to be a little upset with you about the <coughs> handshake line. I was wondering if you could shed any light on that interaction, what you, what's said between the yeah, two. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what really that was about. I just know our team is really just trying to finish the game, play hard. I had on my heart. I had on my Jen. Coach, playing, playing off that, is there a rivalry developing here, and is it kind of good to have um, some teams that, you know, that aren't just kneeling down to UConn and, and, a, and a little bit of dislike between the two programs? No, I don't think so. I think that it's always going to be the in-state schools that, you know, I mean, every every state has it, like Iowa, Iowa State, Michigan, Michigan State, you know, USF, Central Florida, Iowa War 4, you know, I think that's that's always going to be that, you know, that, that kind of in-state rivalry because it's about a little bit more about recruiting. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Nyala. Congratulations on a great season, and we look forward to watching your progress in the postseason. Thank you. Take care, Coach. Thank you. Just let me know. Like, as long as they let me know. I haven't said anything, you know. Okay, if we just want to review uh, the all tournament team, um, KK Wright from UCF, Crystal Dangerfield from UConn, Megan Walker from UConn, Kristen Williams from UConn, Anna Padashik from U USF, and um, the most outstanding player, Nafisa Collier from Connecticut.
UConn is on their way down. Their locker room is now open for the next 15 minutes. Okay, we're joined on the dais by UConn head coach Gina Oriema, student athletes Kristen Williams and Nafisa Collier. We'll have Coach Oriema make an opening statement and then we'll direct the um, questions to the student athletes. We'll dismiss them and then have Coach Oriema answer your question. So, Coach, an opening statement, please. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, winning championships is, uh, is is why you start the season. Uh, that's what every team aspires to do. You know, opening day of practice. You know, that's their goal. You know, win win a conference championship, and uh, our team certainly earned this one. You know, we have a uh, a lot of young guys that this was their first time. You know, being in this situation. So I'm really proud of the way they they responded. Um, you know, uh, Fisa and Crystal were great leaders um, this weekend, and they um, they really just stepped up and covered for Lou. And I just think um, you know this was one of the more uh, satisfying championships that um, that I've been a part of recently, for sure. Questions for the student athletes? Please raise your hand. Please, can you just talk about how this team played without Lou this this, this whole weekend and uh, what that says going forward? Um, as hard as it is to play without Lou, I thought we did a really great job. I thought we had a lot of different people step up, especially our younger guys. I thought did really well, and um, you know. When you have someone go down, whoever it is, you have to have other people step up. And like I said yesterday, the show has to go on. And I thought, you know, we, we I thought we did played really well. Kristen Feast has done this before, but you haven't. I mean, just what are the emotions when you get to throw the confetti, when you get to be out there and you get to see what it feels like? Yeah, it was really fun throwing the confetti. <laughs> um, you know, we've worked really hard for this. Um, I'm really excited that we won this. Um, I mean, it is my first championship, so I'm really proud of the team. I thought we played really well. Fee, as exhausting as it must be for you to play 39 minutes, is it good sort of practice and training for the NCAA tournament? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've. <laughs> I mean, whatever whatever I have to do to help the team is what I'm willing to do, and. Um, Especially, you know, a day like today where we're in the championship, it's really fun, you know, especially because this is my last year. I'd play 40 minutes if I needed to. Coach wanted me to. Uh, you don't have a lot of these games left, and it really does go so fast that you just want to soak it up as much as you can.
with Katie Lou out, obviously we've been talking about how you guys have managed, but um, what's it like to show that the future's here now, Kristen, and then for FISA, I mean, just to, to watch the underclassmen start to step up and show what the future will be? I'll start. Um, I thought they, they did a really, really good job. Um, like you said, having Luau is really hard, but it gave Olivia a chance to prove herself to us, and I think she did that this weekend. Um, she did everything that we needed her to, and Kristen did the same. And, um, you know, as hard as it is, it gave them good minutes, and when Lou's back, it'll have them even more ready for when they when Liv does come in the game and Kristen to continue doing what she did this weekend. Um, yeah, like Lou is gone, so me or the whole team had to contribute in more ways than one. Um, Liv did a great job this weekend. She had a lot of rebounds, a lot of blocks, um, something that we needed. Uh, myself, I just tried to do everything <laughs> coach wanted me to do. Um, yeah. Feast, it seems like every game you guys go on a run. Can you just talk about doing that and how it demoralizes the other team? Can, can you sense their emotions when you guys are starting to score 10, 12 points in a row? Yeah, and that's why we love transition so much because it is, you know, defeating to get a quick for them to for us to get a quick bucket like that. Um, it's one of our favorite things to do, and that's what we've been trying to push this whole year is um, to get out on transition. And I thought we got away from it for a little bit, but getting back to it feels so good. And um, I think that's what we're gonna try to continue to do. For both you guys, I mean. 120 and 0 against the rest of this conference. People just kind of take it for granted that you're going to win. But how proud are you of that fact? And that, that and, and for you that you, you you're going to leave here without ever having lost an American Conference game. Mm -hmm. um, we I think sometimes do make it look easy, but it's I mean it's not easy. The teams they have good players, and um, you know we it was really a fight for us this year. We had a lot of games where we. Um, we're struggling, and I thought we did such a good job. I'm so proud of this team of the way that we kept fighting and kept pushing, and um, it feels really good. Yeah, to back off what she said, um, we had to fight. Like, it wasn't easy. It wasn't just giving it given to us, especially with Lou being gone. So it feels really good. I didn't even know that fact. <laughs> to be honest with you. You're not supposed to know. <laughs> we'll take one more for question for the student athletes. <laughs> Nafisa, how do you feel heading into the tournament? Get this under your belt. Next stop, March Madness. Mm -hmm. I feel really good. I'm proud of everything that my team did. And, um, you know, I feel good. We're going to try to build on it. And like Coach said, we all need to do everything that we're good at and keep pushing and, um, you know, just stay focused and headed in the right direction coming into practice this weekend into the games. Thank you, Nafisa. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> Do you know, were you ever worried without that extra body, without an extra player, obviously a great player in Lou, three games in three days would wear your kids down? Uh, I thought if we had to grind them out all the way to the end, it, it could have been a problem. And that's why it was, it was kind of key that we get some distance so that, you know, we have a little bit of a cushion to play with. You saw that third quarter, you know, it just – Sometimes you get the same shots in the second half that you got in the first half, and they just don't go in for whatever reason. Um, so, you know, the fact that we were up 25, you know, caused, you know, it, it, it didn't cause a lot of anxiety over a couple of missed shots. Um, the the way the way these kids practice, you know, the the, the things that we do, um, they. Uh, you know, they're in great shape. You know they need to be. Uh, they knew it. They knew, they played a lot of minutes all year long, so they're. This wasn't something that was just thrown at them the first time. Um, I was worried that we wouldn't make enough shots, and that happened tonight. You know, especially against a team that's going to play the way Central Florida plays. You really need another shooter out there. Um, that I thought was going to be an issue, but uh, luckily we made we made enough of them, but. Um, this was this was a good one. I, I, I enjoyed this one a, a lot. 
how do you feel about your team heading into the NCAA tournament? And do you think you've learned anything from the last two years um, that will ultimately uh, reach your goal this year? Uh, yeah, I, I learned it's a lot easier when we have Stewie and Mariah and, and Morgan Tuck. Morgan Tuck came in our locker room tonight. I just closed my eyes and saw her in a UConn uniform and almost started crying. Um, you know, let's put it this way. Um, we're different because we're Connecticut. I get that. But uh, every other school in America, if you ask them, uh, so it's devastating losing two years in a row in the Final Four, huh? They'll be like, are you kidding me? Just getting to the Final Four is like a dream come true. And here, you know, for us, we we really, um, you know, feel the the weight of, of all that every single year. And, you know, I think what you learn over the last two years is um, some years you're just not good enough to win it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some years you're just not good enough. And some years you are good enough and you get unlucky. And it just goes to show you, like with each passing year that goes by that you don't win it, it goes to show you how incredible it was to win it that many times and that many times in a row. So... I would love to be in the Final Four and have the last possession with three seconds or five seconds left and the score's tied. I hope I, I'm in that situation every year for the rest of my coaching career. I'll take my chances. But getting there is incredibly difficult, and it's getting more difficult every year. And this year will probably be the most difficult of all. One, because of who we don't have, and one, because of who everybody else does have. So it's going to be it's going to be a struggle this year, but not just for us, for a lot of people. <clears throat> not, you know, not that okay. it was a blessing or anything to have Katie go down, but do you, do you think that it helped a little bit going into the tournament to have these other kids now get a little bit more confident? Yeah, we talked about that. That um, if if we can if we can count on on those young kids, um, and now when Lou comes back, we have a much more complete team. We have more, more options, and, and we have more confidence in ourselves and each other. Sometimes that does take some pressure off of uh, Lou and Fisa if they know that, hey, other people will, can step up and make shots. You know, We couldn't get a shot to drop, so Megan makes a big three from the corner. You know, that was huge. And then a little later, Kristen makes one from the other corner. You know? Um, who knows? If Lou was in the game, she might have taken those two shots. And those kids would have never found out, can I make these shots in a championship game? So, yeah, some good did come out of it. And I think we'll be a better team when Lou comes back. You know? I hope she can, you know, earn her starting spot back. <laughs> I'm not just going to give it to her. I mean, come on. Gito, you know, yeah. Nafisa has been almost machine-like when she gets the ball anywhere near the basket. But in the third quarter, there was a play where she reached in for a steal and went flying down the court and laid it in, took a little contact. Yeah. Does that just speak to what a versatile player she's become over the years? I, I, told, her, I told her at halftime, I said, pass the damn ball. She, she wants the ball every single possession. So if she rebounds it, she is not looking out at it. Almost like I'm not giving it to you guys because I don't want to wait to get it back. So you see how many times she goes end to end. She's like a great defenseman in hockey, you know, just picks the puck up and, and takes off. Like, I'm not passing it to anybody. I'm, I'm going to score. And you can't stop her when she's going like that, you know. Um, the one thing we didn't do well in the third quarter was we didn't get her enough touches. And that's something we're going to have to really take a hard look at. Um, and, and believe it or not, as Liv gets better when she's in the game, uh, Fiso will become even more versatile because when lives in the game, it's a little crowded in the lane. So um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really anxious to see all the things Fiso is going to do in the tournament. I, I'm, I'm just amazed by the things that she does. I think you got to watch her play every day, like you guys have. People around the country, you know, they don't see her every day, but you got to watch her every day to really appreciate what she is and, and, and what she gets done in the course of a game. There's nobody like her. I mean, I, I'm sure there's a lot of great players. I mean, obviously. But I haven't seen anybody that 
takes over games at both ends of the floor the way she does. And n nobody. Hey, Gino, you guys struggled shooting threes throughout the tournament. I think mm -hmm. you guys only went six for 20 tonight. Uh -huh. Are you going to emphasize that um, throughout this time off? Um, nah, you know, I mean, last night we made a bunch of them. And, you know, tonight we didn't. So I think when you shoot threes and you shoot, you know, like we like to, how many shots do we get? 59. Every night, a third of the shots we take are going to be threes. So if we get, you know, 60 shots, 20 of them are going to be threes. We're not going to say, look, if we miss the first five, we're not going to take any more. We're going to take 20. That's all there is to it. And some nights we're going to make 10, and some nights we're going to make six. Um, and like I said, if Lou was here, we might have made 10 out of 20. I don't know. Um, getting her back, you know, will be the best practice for making more threes. Gino, back here, a follow-up on that. How confident are you right now that 10 days from now, Lou will be ready to, uh, to play? Uh, really confident. You know, um, it'll, be, it'll be about three weeks, you know, and um, I would think if she's not ready in three weeks, then we've got some serious issues. But there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, that she's going to be ready to go. You know, every day she's better than the day before. Um, but she got whacked pretty good. That was a pretty good bruise she, she got in there. And uh, um, not a, you know, if it's in your leg or it's in your arm or whatever, it's in your back. You know, that's just everything. You know, that, that controls everything. But believe me, I'm, I'm expecting her to play. And so is she. We'll take two more questions. Gino, obviously, 120 and 0 against this conference. Is it getting tougher? Are the are people getting closer? And um, you know, obviously, it wasn't as easy this year as it as it was last year, a year before that. Yeah, <clears throat> it's supposed to be more difficult. Um, you know, we don't have the we we don't have quite the uh, the team we had the the last five years in this league. I mean, the first five years in this league, I mean, nobody in the country could beat us, much less teams in our league. This year, you know, we didn't have quite the same team. And teams in our league have gotten better. They have improved. And they're going to continue to improve. Um, and, and we have to, you know, we have to make sure that we keep getting better. And <clears throat> I don't know that the goal was to go 120 and 0 when this thing started. I think it's just to win games and win championships. And then you look back and you go, we're 120 and 0. That's a lot. I mean, I don't, anybody can have a bad night. I don't care what anybody says. You know? But 120 and 0. It's 120 and 0. That's a lot of wins. We'll take one final question if there are any. You kind of spoke to it a little bit, you know, in previous years, these next two weeks, you could just sit back and just practice, work it ourselves, whatever, they roll out fine. Right. Is this like more like maybe a lot of the earlier years or a little suspense where you wonder exactly yeah. who when you see the way they're like Yeah, I remember. Projections? Yeah, I remember in the late, uh, late 80s, you know, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, you know, those years. When I used to be obsessed with the brackets, you know, I was probably like every other coach in America. We're getting screwed. We're going to be in the worst bracket. How do we end up in that bracket? Look how easy that bracket is. I mean, that was, that was every year, every year. You look at the board and you go, oh, man, we're dead, you know. Um, yeah, then there came a period of time where I just didn't even look at the bracket. I could care less, you know. Just tell me who we're playing next and we're good to go. This year... Yeah, we're sitting there like everybody else, probably saying, "Ah, oh, man, I hope we get a break." I hope, but what's a break? You know, hey, I hope we're not in that bracket. So you're in a different bracket, and somebody comes out and kicks your butt anyway. So, you know, more so than ever, though, I think there's more teams looking at the bracket this year than than ever before, because there's more change. 
who's number one, who's number two, who just moved to a three. People are still moving people around, whereas usually by around this time, it's kind of set. I don't, I don't see it that way right now. So, and you know, here's my thing. Where are we going? If we win the first two games, where are we going? Albany, right? Is that right? And people out there are bitching that we always go to Albany. What, and tell somebody else to freaking bid on it. Like it's our fault. People are bitching. They go to Albany every year. Well, guess what? We've been the number one seed in the country the last 11 years. Where the hell else are you going to put us? <laughs> it's, just, it's just unbelievable. That's why we always have, you know, people don't notice, but we play with a little chip on our shoulder, too. It just doesn't show. Yeah. You know, people think we get breaks. We earn our breaks. We win every goddamn game, and then we go where we're supposed to go. That's what the rule says. Number one seed in the country goes someplace close. Someplace close is either Bridgeport or Albany lately. When I was in Trenton, we went to Trenton. When I was in Dayton, we went to Dayton. How far east you got to go? I don't care if they put it in freaking Middle East. We'll still go there and we'll still win. <laughs> That's my rant on the NCAA tournament. Do Huh? It's just typical women's basketball bullshit. You know? We clear our bench, we put our subs in, all of a sudden there's a trap in the air court. You haven't trapped us one time the whole the whole game. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. My guys are just hoping that they don't dribble the ball off their foot. Now you're gonna trap them. That is what it is. I coach my team, nobody else's. Oh good. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, Congratulations. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Bernie. Take care. Wonderful as usual. Hey, Derek. Yep, I'll see you. Yep.